Welcome everybody to part nine of our intermediate Python programming tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is more on generators. So a few tutorials ago, we talked about list comprehension and generators, but actually really just generator expressions. So if you remember back, back in the day, we had a tutorial where I showed uh, something like this and that was list comprehension. And then I was like, but you can do the following and it's actually now a generator and it's literally just changing those outside brackets to parentheses. Boom, generator or really a generator expression, the lazy way of creating generators. But there is another way to create a generator. And also I will just remind you again, the difference between list comprehension and a generator is that list comprehension is generally going to be faster once that if once and if that list is in memory but actually building a list is actually kind of a um a taxing process but in many cases or maybe even most cases building the list and iterating over the list is going to be faster than a generator a generator just will not use the same memory or right? it will use just a tiny tiny fraction of the memory that list comprehension or a list would use Okay, so we remember that because we were there. So now what we're gonna be talking about is how to build your own generator, not a generator expression, a real generator. So first of all, generators do not return things, generators yield things. So maybe you've seen something like this before, like let's say we're gonna create this generator function and we're gonna call it a simple gen or simple generator. And it's super simple. All it does is yield O, and then it's going to yield hello, o, and then it's going to yield there. Amazingly simple generator, which we can now iterate. So for i in simple, whoops, simple gen, um, we're just going to print i. So we run that, bring the interpreter down, and we get o oh, hello there. Okay. No surprise, we could also make a, you know, you could use li list comprehension to actually run over this if you wanted and it would be fine. It would build a list that says, oh, hello there, uh, but you could do that. But basically this is the same in terms of processing as saying something like for i in range five or something like that, right? So it's a generator. So this is a really simple generator function, but it gets the idea across. Now, First of all, I wanted to show this purely because you might actually see a, a generator in code that you didn't write. And if you don't know what the heck that is, um, that's a problem. But also, uh, there are times when a generator is just where, where you might have to actually write your own generator. So let's consider an example where at least a generator is better than a for loop or even list comprehension. So let's say you have a program and you're going to try to figure out the right combination. So you've got this, this pseudo program that you could think of it almost as a password cracker. We're just going to, rather than using characters, we'll just use numbers like a number combination lock. So let's say the, the correct, correct combo is going to be equal to, and you can use any combination you want. Um, yeah, just use any combination you want. Probably don't start with zero just so I can illustrate fully my point. Um, but otherwise, do whatever you'd like. So I'm going to use 361. Now, with a for loop, to figure out this combo, you might do something like this. Uh, for C1, just for combination 1, in range. We know where it's a 0 through a 9, so range 10. Um, so for C1, and then you could check C1, but you really don't know if it's the correct combination to a lock unless you do you try all the letters at the same time. So there's no way for us to check that first letter or that first character or in the case of a lock, that first number. We don't really have the answer. We actually have to do all of them at once unless we're like a lock picking pro or something. Um, but we're not. So now we're gonna check for C2 in range 10 and then again for C3 in range 10. Now we have all the combinations. We're going to say, we're just going to ask if uh, C1, C2, C3 equals correct combo, we print um, found the combo colon. And look at us. We're going to use some string formatting. Woo. C1, C2, C3. Great. OK, so we can run this. 
And sure enough, we find the combo. Everybody's happy. We, we did it all right. But here's the thing is if we say print uh, found the combo, let us go ahead and come over here after the if statement. Let's just, for kicks, let's print C1, C2, C3. And let's run it one more time. Waiting. We're just going to wait till it finds the combo. And then we're going to look and see what happens. Found the combo. It just whizzed by. And then here we go. We're checking all of the other combinations. Well, that's dumb. Okay. Whoops. I took away the camera. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Uh, well, that's dumb. So you might think, okay, well, what we can do. Aha. We will break. We'll just break it. Run that. And again, found the combo. Why did I get rid of that other print statement? Um, I'll just write print C1, C2, C3. Wait for it. Found the combo. It did break. It did break. If we were able to go up there, we would see it broke. But it was uh, it broke just this iteration of C3 amongst C2 and C1. So at most, it saved us like you know five or six, uh, or I suppose it could save up to nine uh, checks. But other than that, that break did not save us anything. So then, what we would have to do is maybe we'd have to we'd have to insert break statements at every at every level. So maybe we we'd be like, okay, we're we're good programmers. We're going to say found combo equals uh, false, and then we're going to say instead, you know, if found combo break, and we're just going to issue this at every level. Whoops. If found combo break, and then. Uh, yes, found combo equals true, and we'll break. Now, uh, we will run that. It finds the combo, and it breaks, and it breaks all the way through, because it sets found combo to true, breaks everything through, and we're good. But boy, was that a lot of code to make that happen. So now what we're going to do is rather than using for loops, what we might do is let's make a generator. So instead, let me just make some space here. Instead, we're going to say define combo gen. And then it's going to be basically everything that we just saw. But we're going to just do 4C1 in range. 10, 4C2 in range, 10, 4C3 in range, 10, uh, yield, C1, C2, C3. Okay, so we're going to yield these, and that's our generator. Now what we're going to do is iterate over the generator. So for C1, C2, C3 in combo gen, because that's our, our uh, generator. So what do we know about the generator? We know that it, it does not return things. I almost even said it returns things. It yields things in a stream. And that stream can be uh, ceased either through logic in the generator itself, or we can stop it. So for C1, C2, C3 in combo generator, what are we going to do? We First of all, we can print just so we can see it. C1, T2, T3. And then if this, if that equals our correct combo, um, then we will take this, print. Then uh, we, we found the combo, and we're just going to break. Boom. One break statement. Uh, C1, C2, C3. We'll just do that. Good. Run it. Continues running. Notice it's a little, there it is. OK, found the combo. 3, 6, and 1. Here it is, found the combo. And notice we didn't even make it to this print statement. Everything's done. The, the generator is no longer generating anything. We got our answer. So in this case, we were able to actually break out with a single break. Now, in terms of line count, I'm pretty sure this only saves us like two lines in reality. Um, but if you ask me, 
this is a lot cleaner looking, much more simple, and it was much easier to actually use our logic. And we got to use a generator which wasn't wasting our memory. In this case, this was a really simple task, uh, test, but in many cases, you might find yourself trying to do something like this uh, and just, just getting outrageous like we did here. Like, this is just ugly. Um, so anyways, that's a little bit more on genera generators, how to write your own generator. In this case, again, um, oh, we, I got rid of my first example, but the first example where we just we just hard-coded what that generator was going to yield, you can have a generator yielding anything you want based on any logic you want. So it's really, really cool uh, to be able to do that, especially to be able to iterate through stuff. You also, um, we just happen because we're just trying to generate some stuff, but you don't even, you don't have to use a generator in a generator and all that. So um, it's just meant to be a really simple example. But anyway, if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, um, cool examples of generators, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.